This is David Gunn from the Queensland Institute and this video covers my approach to preparation of DMEC tissue. I start the case by using a Moria vacuum trefine, guard a depth at 200 microns, place my graft down, turn the vacuum on and use the trefine like percussing a chest so that we don't get too deep a trephination but that it's complete. As you lift off the, the trefine, try not to break the seal as if you need to repunch you can. Membrane blue is used to give a good stain and then I irrigate. I don't use a cannula on irrigation as I find it introduces fine bubbles and also worry about the speed of the fluid going on to the endothelium. After this I use a 0.2mm Sinsky hook to do a 360 degree separation of the Desmase membrane. I've used various instruments but find the Sinsky hook to be round and, and be the most forgiving instrument. It causes the least tears in my hands. One issue with this technique is that the stroma posteriorly in young patients can be very loose and the decimase attachment is strong. And so as you're trying to separate the decimase, the stroma can rise up to meet you like an accordion and give very poor counter traction. Notch forceps can be utilized in this situation to allow counter traction for uh, separation of the decimase. Obviously this is slow uh, going, but it's an effective way of getting around the problem. Sometimes the decimase to stroma adhesion is so tight and all the stromal cut is so deep that you just can't get started. Here again, using a notched forcep can allow you to try and get into that plane with the Sinsky. An alternative method is to create a rip within, uh, inside the trephination, just using a 15 degree blade. Sometimes you will encounter doer's layer. I find that this rips and is, is very strongly adherent to the stroma, so I don't include it in my peel. I just uh, leave it behind and strip decimase alone. An alternative method for making the initial scoring is to use a 15 degree blade. Uh, I find this to be uh, quicker and uh, also more cost effective. After you've done staining, it's important to remove all the peripheral rips. It's important to understand how membrane blue stains. So bare stroma stains well, while the endothelial side of decimase stains poorly and the stromal side stains well. You can see here that bare stroma staining. So after this we do the big peel. It's important to go slow and watch for rips. Go directly across the cut rather than at an angle. And if there's an irregular or weak area, I try to peel towards that area. Only peel areas where decimase has been freed, preferably 360 degrees. And any tear that you cause uh, needs to be completed, otherwise uh, it'll tear and propagate as you peel through. I use Cohen McPherson forceps and go directly across the cup can see here I'm starting going a little left and then I straighten up. It's important to keep your vectors equal. I perform an 80 to 90 percent peel and leave a hinge and I tend to put that hinge in an area that may have been difficult to separate initially or if there's a phaco wound put that at the hinge. And these are McPherson forceps not to use. You can see that the tying platforms don't meet properly so Either you're going to have a small contact service or you're going to be holding the decimase too tightly. Either of those will cause rips. You can use two pairs of tying forceps uh, to do a napkin or tablecloth technique. I find this really useful. It's important to keep the forces and direction equal again and keep plenty of slack between the forceps. Proprietary DMEC forceps can be used and they give a broad flat occlusion. I find them really comfortable to use but obviously it requires buying more equipment. So as you do your big peel, it's important to go slow to watch for a rip. If something suddenly changes, don't keep peeling, just let go. At this point, restain and assess the damage. So you can see here this uh, cornea had phaco wounds in it that had been unrecognized. And so phaco wounds, if you peel through them, will just rip because there's an adhesion there. You may need to improvise in these sort of situations. Consider decentering your 
second punch and you may reduce the size of your harvest area. The smaller grafts likely don't survive as well and you're not transplanting as many endothelial cells. After this we use spears to uh, dry the cup. The spears drag water towards them and wherever water goes so does the decimase membrane so putting them symmetrically helps the membrane to stay central in that situation. After drying, I use a 2mm skin punch to create a stromal window. I place part of the blade over one of the vacuum vents, as this allows a tissue bridge to be left behind so that we don't get a free stromal disc. Despite that, sometimes you might get a free stromal disc in the tip of the skin punch. You can see the defect left there on the graft. I think it's important to fish out and, re and replace this free cap. If you can't retrieve it, just avoid using the vacuum again or decimates may be drawn down into the stromal defect. After this I refloat the decimates and I do my membrane blue soak at this stage. I find less than 90 seconds I can't see the scroll properly and more than 90 seconds I find the F stamp is difficult to see because the decimates are stained so heavily. I dry at this point and use the, uh, use the spears to drag and unroll the decimates towards you just with the flow of fluid. It's important to dry that interface very well as when you mark your F, if there's a lot of fluid in the interface it can be difficult to get a good mark. I flip over the graft and then open the stromal window at this point. Sometimes there'll be tissue bridges and it's difficult to open that window. I cut those bridges with a sharp pair of vanis. Dry the well uh, thoroughly at this point. I look at the corners of the well and if I see a fluid meniscus uh, then at the, I know that I need to do more drying at that point. I mark a Sinsky with a, a thick surgical pen and make an F. I find that thin tip pens and ink pads don't work quite as well for this. It's important to have it really dry to get a good mark. I then replace the cap and flip over the graft. I turn the vacuum on at this point and use the 8mm trefine. It's important to do a firm press here as you really want complete trephination for this 8mm disc. At this point I use BSS to refill the cup and remove the 8-10mm to annulus. It's important to do this carefully as sometimes there will be tissue bridges and if they are there you can complete them like a rexus. This is an early case and you can see here there's some rotation of the trefine while cutting this 8mm section and you can see the F actually sliding there. So with restaining you can see that there's a, a very large central rip in the decimase membrane graft and this tissue was unable to be used. It's very important not to have any rotation during trephination in DMEC particularly once areas have been peeled. For the final peel, start opposite to the unpeeled area, which will be unstained. Peel horizontally until you're at the unpeeled zone, and then go directly upwards. I find that a tying forcep is enough uh, for this peel. You should drop the scroll directly into a petri dish that's filled with BSS. I prefer to use the Goida DMAC kit, and here is some video from the company showing uh, the assembly of the tubing, the pipette and the syringe filled with BSS. So here you do gentle pulses of suction to draw the scroll up into the glass pipette and while that's underwater dock it with a 3mm syringe filled with BSS that's bubble free. Really any container that has a wide base and low sides can be used for this process and I find inverted specimen jars a good alternative to the petri dish. Thank you.